when you came to Moldova, uh, what were your thoughts or your main ideas uh, regarding the informational security within the cyberspace? I was very intrigued about coming to Moldova because I had heard a lot about it from my brother. My brother has a lot of friends in Romania and he said, when you come to Moldova, you must come visit me in Romania. And I said, I would like to do that. And he decided that he was not going to come to Romania now. But because he spent a lot of time in Romania, I was very much aware of how technologically advanced Romania and Moldova are in terms of IT, information technology. And what you've been able to do is leapfrog where in the United States, most of our landline telecommunications are a twisted wire pair, copper, underground. You have skipped that step. You've gone to iPhones, you've gone to Androids. That's very smart because you are not stuck with old systems. You're moving quickly to the new systems and you're adopting them very quickly. So I was aware of that and very impressed with that. that Moldova has to pay attention to be, being a, a kind of beginner country in the implementation of e-transformation? Ah, now that's a very good question. There are two principal things you need to worry about. Big business and big neighbors. Uh, because you are adopting the new technology, a lot of companies want to come in and say, we're the best by our equipment and supplies. And unless you understand better about their equipment, you are going to get captured or locked in to a certain company's technology, which may not be the best for your particular use. So that's why you have to be very careful about the technology that you buy, uh, whether it's eCloud or whether it's uh, any type of of communications technology. For example, Huawei is a Chinese company. Huawei produces a tremendous amount of information technology capability. And you can buy it from them less expensively than any other company. The problem is they're Chinese and that's the way they collect a lot of their intelligence is through Huawei. The United States government recently conducted a study and concluded that Huawei is not permitted to sell their technology to U.S. telecommunication companies because they're part of the spying mechanism for China. So there may be other countries that produce technology that you need to be sensitive to as well. That's why the supply chain risk management process is so critically important. You need to make sure you have subject matter experts that are giving you unbiased advice on any technology that you incorporate into your, te into your communication system. And uh, how do you think what should do the government in order to guarantee the informational security? Well, one of the things that I learned about Moldavia yesterday, Moldova yesterday, which really impressed me, is that instead of the e-government process being driven by business, it's being led by the government. That is a plus. Now, I look back on U.S. history. We had, this was back in the 30s when electricity was coming to the United States. It was in the big cities like New York and Chicago, but very little elsewhere. So the government said, okay, you will provide electricity all across the country. And the business world said, there's no profit. There's no business case for it. And the government said, unless you do it, you're not in business. So the government led that advance in technology. The U.S. government did the same thing for telecommunications technology. Every household has to have the opportunity to have a dial tone for a landline. So the concept that your government is doing to encourage e-government 
is a phenomenal process, and I'm very fascinated by that. And it's, uh, as I explained to your colleagues yesterday, this is something that can be done in other countries all across the world. I mean, you, you are forming an opportunity for others to adopt a model, and you should be very proud of that. What are the main errors, like the main mistakes, um, in the countries that have started the process of peace transformation? Can you repeat that? Uh, what are the most frequent mistakes um, in the countries that have started the process of peace transformation? The biggest mistake is hubris and overconfidence. Mm -hmm. You know, we are so smart we don't need anybody else. This problem is too big for the government. It's too big for the private sector. We all need to work together. It's too big for one government to solve or one country to solve. We have to work at this together. There's land, sea, air, and space. Those are four domains that are not made by humankind. The domain that is made by humankind is cyberspace. We made it, we can change it, we can make it better. And so the mistake many individuals make is to think that we're the only ones that can do it and no one else is competent. And that is a bad mistake to make. Some of the best security vulnerability analysts. People call them hackers. I call them vulnerability researchers. Are your neighbor, Romania. Did you know that? They're recognized as world class. Yeah, they're good. They're very good. Raul Rick from Estonia. I'm one of the uh, cybersecurity experts uh, in my country and um, I also um, do different uh, work in different uh, other countries like uh, Georgia and uh, Albania uh, and elsewhere. So I'm more or less uh, dealing with uh, strategic uh, cyber security issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so what were your thoughts or your main ideas when you came uh, to Moldova regarding the informational security within the cyberspace? Um, the main idea was that uh, Estonia and Moldova have very many similarities. We have the same uh, kind of history and uh, we are also both small nations. And I noticed that the uh, cyber security uh, issues in Moldova are pretty much the same that they are in, in Estonia. So we know that Estonia is a very advanced country in the process of heat transformation. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what are the main or the first steps of Estonia mm -hmm. um, in the implementation of the process of heat transformation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that there are like uh, two main thing, main things, like a uh, basis for all information society developments. One is the uh, like maybe you have here the X road system that basically it's a secure way how to connect the different uh, national databases together without centralizing them. So each ministry could have their own information, uh, is it, if it's uh, Minister of Internal Affairs or Minister of Defense or Minister of Economy, it doesn't matter. They have their own databases, but we created a way how to connect them uh, in a secure way. And the second thing is the electronic identification, electronic identity. Uh, we first created the ID card with what we can give uh, uh, identify ourselves and give digital signature. And I've heard that also you in Moldova had introduced the uh, mobile ID. So exactly, that's the first cornerstone. These two things, basically. Okay, thank you. And uh, we know that Estonia has faced a cyber attack, mm -hmm. a great cyber attack. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us how could you um, develop this process in order to solve it? Mm -hmm. um, the approach has to be comprehensive. It's not only that you make one system more secure and another system more secure, it's a national capability. And by capability I mean there has to be appropriate legal 
uh, or legislation, there has to be appropriate organization, uh, some capabilities under police forces, under military, under different uh, responsible areas. So I would say that the key word there is comprehensive approach. And first, the government or government officials have to understand very clearly that uh, cybersecurity is a new security domain as any other. If you protect your ter uh, territory or your airspace or your, uh, if some countries have the uh, uh, sea, then if you protect these things, you have to protect your cyberspace as well. Uh, how much time uh, Estonia needed in order to improve the system of uh, informational security? Uh, it's a continuous process. I would say that we, we develop it further every day. Uh, in 2007, the technical security measures were pretty much there. But uh, if it's not the regular virus, if it's something special, it's if, if the attack is specially developed uh, to attack you, then the normal procedures uh, won't help anymore. Then you have, uh, you have to have a system how to mobilize the expert groups in order to deal with this issue. And uh, that's why I would say that it's never-ending story. You have to develop the capability uh, all the time. And what were the most important changes which was, were implemented by the government of Estonia? Uh, first thing, we created the policy development uh, unit. Uh, we had CERT, Computer Emergency Response Team, already there. But then we created the policy-making body under the government and uh, then there is also uh, different changes, different organizational changes, just to put more people to deal with cybersecurity issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is uh, Shuki Peleg. I am uh, the head of information security for e-government for the government of Israel, which is part of the Ministry of Finance, uh, specializing specifically on uh, security and cybersecurity in the, in the last few years. The main thoughts or the main ideas you came to Moldova uh, regarding the cyber security? Well, the, the main idea behind this visit is to, to, to make sure that everyone understands that information sharing is one of the most important issues in the cyber security arena. Uh, today, when cyber security events are happening, it is very important for different bodies and different organizations worldwide to share information regarding what has happened and what was the way it was uh, uh, tackled. Uh, because events that are happening today in one part of the world can very easily and very quickly uh, appear again in other, in other parts of the world. For, for example, if something is happening right now, let's say in New Zealand, it may be happening here in only a couple of hours. So in the sharing of information in cybersecurity, in my opinion, is one of the most important things. Uh, another thing regarding cybersecurity is to, to make sure that you understand that cybersecurity events can, can be silent. You, they are happening and you don't know they are actually happening un underneath. So there was a question before in, in the conference if it, how to compare uh, cybersecurity attacks to, to physical attacks. And in my opinion, it can be even more dangerous because it, it is happening, it is going on, and you don't know about it. And it creates confusion, it can create chaos. Uh, if something physical happens, let's say an earthquake or, or a missile attack, a rocket attack, it, it happens in a very limited uh, location. You know exactly what happened. The, the forces are already ready to, uh, to respond and, and they are doing it and the people, the, the, the population, the citizens know that things are being taken care of. But when there is chaos and, and cyber crime or cyber terrorists are attacking your uh, environment, you don't really know what's going on, and the, the, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is around you can create even more chaos. So uh, countries, governments, organizations need to make sure that they are ready for cybersecurity events and they have good response at that time. And uh, back again, information sharing is a, a very important piece of it because you can learn from the experience of other places, other countries, other organizations. Transformation in Israel, and if you could tell us what were the first steps 
implemented by the government of Israel in the process of peace transformation, because we know in Israel there exists um, a military um, difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, was this a problem in the process of peace transformation? Or how would you describe it? Uh, well, the, the ex actually the existence of a mi military situation, as you describe it, is also uh, an opportunity to create uh, a better cybersecurity environment because many of the experts that are coming to the government or to organization uh, had their first experience uh, while they were serving in the military. So uh, a lot of the military experience is continuing in, into the private sector to, and, and to the government sector. Uh, in the in e-government the e in Israel, what we are building is a group which is uh, overlooking the cybersecurity issues. It's part of e-gov. It's overlooking the operations and giving the guidelines for the operations and how to react fast. And, uh, and this is by, by adopting say, nation, international standards. Uh, again, this is part of the, of the attempt or the, the a desire to, to work and to share information. If you share information according to standards, it's much easier, easier to share it with other organizations. So we built an organization that is adapting standards and sharing information with other, other entities. Uh, one of the first things I would say again is to, to adapt international standards, to plan ahead. You're in a very good position because you, are, you have started only recently in the last uh, two or three years, so you can create a strategic plan as you did, adapt standards, and make, uh, make all efforts to implement them. Do be, be, be flexible, but go according to plan, according to strategic plan and standards. Thank you very much. You're welcome.